take that. We were just in Brussels, right? A bunch of us uh, looking at the IGF and they're talking uh, the, uh, the ICANN, and they're talking about the new GTLDs. And one of the things that they were looking at is things like a bank registry, right? A dot bank or something along those lines. Um, and the idea behind it is that the banks already have their own web, their own websites, but the idea is is to try to brand some sort of safe space, right? Uh, I can see there being an effort to do this, even if it's not going to be successful in the long run, uh, where companies would have a tremendous incentive to keep you inside their wall. And so, and so uh, while I think you're absolutely right, people who are trying to keep out uh, a, a company that's interested in, in, in reaching out to a consumer can have a hard time. I wonder about the, uh, the obverse of that, which is that, that a company would be able to say, hey, look, it's safe in here. There's air conditioning. Don't leave. We know now everything about you. We'll provide, you know, we are, you know, pick a very large company. We, we are, we're doing the things that a, a, a repressive totalitarian regime only dreams of being able to do because we're actually offering you something you want, right? Um, what do people think about that as, an op as, as, a, as a potential? I think that, you know, it's much more realistic to look at it, I think, from a different perspective. I, I understand what you're saying, Andy, but uh, let's take a look. It's just a strong man, by the way, Leslie, you know. Where we are today and what's going on between the communication between governments and industry, we are an operator. We look after the well-being of our customers the best that we can. Um, and we do that um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, most of it is very technical. You know, it's behind the scenes. It changes all the time. The threats are always changing. It's continuing threats. However, that's just one piece of it. And even if you have a wall garden that a corporation may have an interest in, uh, in uh, selling products, services, whatever, even that is limited. On the cybersecurity side, you have to have the cooperation between the private sector and governments. And let me share with you how I see the cooperation and what's going on today in a very pragmatic and practical manner. Different parts of the world have various organizations, associations that deal with these issues. For example, in Latin America, we have CETEL, which is part of the OAS, the Organization of American States, that deals with telecom issues. More and more of the work that we do there for the Americas looks at cybersecurity issues, looks at the kind of issues that we're discussing here today, and looks at it from a very unique regional perspective. So for example, if Peru has an issue with Ecuador and with Brazil, they will start the dialogue and then it moves out and brings in other countries from the region. We are there as, as a private sector to share with them what our best practices are in principle of what we are doing. That dialogue then moves on and gets picked up by the regulators that are responsible in this area for virtually all of the, all of the countries in the region. This is repeated in, in the work that I do in APAC Telma Asia Pacific region with their own special set of concerns. And even on the multilateral sphere with the ITU in the development sector, there is a group chaired by the State Department. And that group, their remit is a completely voluntary set of standards that countries around the world can subscribe to that will help in this. And what they are doing is they are asking operators, including my company, to help them to come up with a set of best practices or principles of what other operators around the world can do to help the situation. So the voluntary principles for operators or for governments? For or for both? For operators. Now these operators at the same time are talking to their own governments who are in turn thinking of what kind of regulations they need to put in place. Not to kill off the investment coming into that particular country, but still strengthening the security aspect of it as much as possible. So there is this multi-layered ongoing dialogue with industry with governments, with regulators, with the experts, and this is an ongoing process. And uh, unless you have something like that, I don't think you, any wall that you construct is going is going to, to to find the solution that you're looking for. It's challenging, but I don't know any better way that that's non mandated, mm -hmm. that's not forced, but it's out there, and we're giving the best advice that we can from our own experiences, hoping that that will.